How's it going everyone? I'm Motif Games and this is going to be another Last Epoch build guide. This time we're going to be doing Gathering Storm with a focus on Storm's Bolt. I have been playing this live on Twitch so if you're interested you can come by and watch. We'll probably be pushing this and pre preparing some of the other characters soon that we'll be doing builds for along the way. I do just want to give a quick shout out. Dreadful uh, did a video on this kind of going into the theory of how this build would work. His video link will be down in the description. There is some differences in ours. This one is meant to be more of a like kind of pick up and go along as you play version while I feel like his is more of a like very very late game transition now let's start into the skills the first one's going to be gathering storm this you can spec this early it's not going to feel super impactful in the very beginning of the game in the same way swipe does but don't worry it'll get online very quickly within like 20 levels we're going to start with one point in the jolting strikes and one point in the frost bringer. this converts it to cold this is going to be very important for a lot of our other skills it turns shock chance into frostbite chance which means our resistance debuff is now going to be a damage over time effect and from there we're going to put one point into looming clouds and one point into lightning strikes twice this will increase our damage a good bit against rares and bosses with that out of the way three more points in the jolting strikes to get your storm bolt chance up to 100 percent for frost proc and then one point in Wind Fury Blows and four points into Thunderous Strikes. At the moment, I've only got three, but that's because, as you can see, it's a low level. I've been messing around with stuff. Uh, once that's done, you can do two points into Ice and Snow and one point into Winter Comes. I do think you can put this off for a while because this scales with Attunement, and if you're not stacking a bunch of Attunement yet, it's not that great. Any other points from there can go into Concentrated Storm. There is going to be eventually a point where you have so much mana regen that we're going to take Excited Bolts, and this is going to be a massive damage increase. But think of this as like the very last thing that you'll pick feel free if you ever have an item that gives plus one to a skill to put it on try excited bolts see if it works and then take it off all right and now that we're done talking about gathering storm we're going to talk about the second main skill maelstrom for with maelstrom you're going to pick up two points of turmoil and then two points of beneath the waves this is going to make it so that every second we get a stack of lagon slumber so we don't have to cast it as often we could just keep doing this and moving along it's really nice right with our quality of life out of the way you have two options the first one is if you want to go through the story as fast as possible just running through the game we're going to pick up one point of whirlpool one point of turbulence, two points of calm, one point of one sweat. This will give us haste at six stacks, which is bonus movement speed. Kind of see where I'm going with that, right? It doesn't do anything for damage, but we're getting through it a lot faster because this with the good wand should still be fine damage. You can pick up wind fury to give yourself extra cast speed and attack speed. So when you are casting gathering storm in the early game, it'll at least help with that. This will also be good late game, so don't worry, it's not a wasted point. If you don't care about getting through the game faster, instead do two points of Whirlpool, one point of Sleep Footed, and one point of Power of the Storm. This will make it so that your Maelstrom will cast Storm Bolts each second at nearby enemies, as long as you have six and above stacks. That's partially why Lagon Slumber is so important as well, that six and above threshold. Um, and it's just more damage on top of it. And then once you pick up this, you can max out Whirlpool and then start coming over for the haste. Just whichever one you do, right, go the other way after. Uh, from there, for our third spec, you can do one of two things. You can either do Storm Crows or Tornadoes. Either is fine. Just pick whichever is more comfy for you. If you don't want to worry about casting another spell, let's do Storm Crows. If you want to start going into your high end damage, Tornadoes will be better. But for Storm Crows, I actually feel like it's a lot of extra damage early. So we're going to put one point here into Avis and then three points into Aspect of the Crow. This will give us uh, bonus stacks of Aspect of the Crow every time they hit something, which will give us stacking spell and lightning damage, which as you can see here as the crows are hitting can stack up quite a few times. It's not too uncommon in my experience when we're fighting like hordes of enemies to get up to like 10 stacks. For some reason, my stacks seem a little low here in the training room. It might be because of like server issues going on. I don't know, but you could expect somewhere between like seven to 10 stacks as you're uh, playing through. As you can see, we started getting up to eight. After this, go ahead and pick up Wisdom of the Storm. This will make it so that they'll cast it on you every 10 seconds, just two free sacks occasionally. I've found that it does help a good bit. And then from there, we're going to put one more point to Avis, one point to Nimbleness. And then I want you to put two points into Shredding, one point into Feathered, and then Max Shredding. This will make it so that they shred armor on hit, which is actually kind of important, even though some of our damage, a lot of our damage will eventually come from Frostbite, especially in the early game. It's going to be coming from the on damage hits from our Storm Bolts. So armor shred will actually do a good bit of damage. And then you'll, you should have strength somewhat as you're playing through the early game, and it gives you a little bit of help 
uh in case so it's not a wasted stat so you can pick those up fill out avis so that they're casting a little bit faster actually giving you more of these and then you can just dump points on a shocking display i don't think it really matters what you get once you've got like all this upper stuff now with that out of the way let's talk about tornado so with tornado you're gonna immediately start with one point into charge storm this will make it so that they'll cast storm bolt on nearby enemies every two seconds you can fill out frequent lightning to make this happen more faster if you want or you can kind of ignore it and go down hurricane instead i think it's worth it to put like two or three points in here so let's just say one point to charge three points into frequent lightning and then i like to do three points into lasting storm and four points into hurricane this makes it so that every hurricane has a chance to cast two um or tornado however the hell we want to say it as you can see there's two of them <clears throat> and then one point into aspect of the storm and four points in the gust of renewal this will make it so that you can cast more because this thing really does just eat your mana up i would say if you have something that's like plus three to level of tornado or plus four you can work towards druidic control to get stationary tornadoes i don't feel like this is too important like we're casting it so much that we're able to actually like constantly hit them so extra points for now we're going to go into debris and once i have a chess piece that gives me plus three i might move into druidic control uh pretty simple this is what you're going to be casting a lot of the time once you've actually got tornadoes up you'll stop at manually casting gathering storm and just go for this and then we'll go into Fury Leap. From there, three points into Crater, one point into Lagan's Wrath, three points into Stormbringer, and one point into Rejuvenating Storms. What this does is every time you jump, your Fury Leap will cast Storm Bolts now. So we can just come up to an enemy and like jump over it, and bam, they get hit a bunch of times. By putting the other two points as a Stormbringer, we increase that frequency quite a bit. Uh, the spell damage while leaping will go up for attunement. You have a chance to reset the cooldown. Uh, this doesn't seem to be working at the moment. I have yet to have it reset by the storm bolts ever. It might be because we spec'd it to frost, but I don't know. So this build in theory could be better, but I still want to take that for the attunement. After that, four points in a panther strike to lower the cooldown because we're not getting resets. Having a lower cooldown means we'll have it up more often. And then global melee and spell damage. We really just want the spell damage on leap. Just funneling more into the uh, damage that we'll be getting from this. This is pretty much the build. Now, I did make a comment and say, we won't be hard casting Gathering Storm in the long run, right? This is slow. It's not that much damage compared to everything else we're doing. You could throw a totem on this, like drop Storm Totem or something. And the reason for that is Primalist has a bunch of totem passives that we can pick up. We're not doing them right now, uh, partially because I'm broke and literally can't afford to respect some of the things that I've been doing, but I feel like it's one of those things that down the line, when we have way more attunement, we'll be looking to do this. So let's go ahead and start the passive tree. And for this, I'm actually going to be utilizing last epoch dot tools because again, I'm broke. I do not have the money on this fresh character to constantly respect for this, but this is what we're going to be going for. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with eight points of natural attunement and then one point into Harmony of Blades and Hunter's Restitution. This gives us uh, axes in our offhand, which will be helpful for a later thing from there. Five points in Wisdom of the Wilds, and then five points in the Tempest Bond. Pretty happy with this. Uh, we're going to come over to Shaman. Five points in the Shamanic Confusion to give us some attunement and pin. And then five points in the Elder Branch. This is why we want an axe in the offhand. Uh, if you find a really good piece of gear that's like a catalyst or something, just something that would give more than 15 flat spell damage and a bunch of good percentage modifiers, you can drop this, use whatever the hell you want in your offhand. Sometimes you'll use a two-hand. We'll cover that in the inventory stuff. But... Uh, for the early game, I especially found this helpful. From there, we'll do five points into Lagonian Wrath, and then ten points into Windbringer, five points into Shattered Heavens, five points into Rune of Awe, five points into Elemental Shrines, and then at this point, we've kind of like got our base set up, right? This gives us a chance to cast Stormbolts when we're hit, melee and flat spell damage, 50% increased cold damage, some dodge rating, 10 flat spell damage. 10 flat spell damage, attunement, and then uh, some nice mana regen per three attunement. This is another reason why, we, why we'll be stacking attunement. Um, at this point, we do kind of have like a tricky setup, right? We need three points in a Lagon's answer so that we can get access to Conflux later. And then we're just gonna go ahead and fill out some of the random bits of spells that we need. So like we wanted to fill out the attunement on Elemental Shrines and Shamanic Infusion. And then just like maybe a random point in Rune of Awe. There is argument to say we could have picked up Birth and Supremacy too, but Whatever. With that out of the way, we need five points in the Conflux, and this gives us double a 20% chance to double our Storm uh, Bolt cast, because they're all indirect. So that will always apply. From here, we're going to go ahead and pay the Beastmaster tax. If you don't know what that is, it's five points in Ursine Strength, five points in a Boar Heart, two more po or three more points in Ursine Strength, two points in the Call of the Pack, 
and then five points into porcelain conflux uh constitution what this does is just gives you a bunch of damage resist whenever someone hits you uh the the passives are just so good that you really can't afford to not grab them from there i like to pick up earth and supremacy and then we have 10 points left i really like grabbing uh chitonius plating and you can come in here and grab five points of druidic prowess that gives you another plus one to all attributes to give us a little bit more attunement that's the passive tree from level one to level 100 there will be like i may change kind of how i do it if i end up doing the totem stuff i'm gonna have to respect a lot of this go into totem things but this is my current plan for while i'm not using a totem now on for inventory the game's down so i can't really pull things up but the main thing i want to say is a you really want to make sure that you have i i have it on unix there we go the main thing I want to say is you want to make sure that you have a scepter or a wand in your main hand. In the very beginning of the game, it better be a scepter because you want that flat melee damage along with the axe in your offhand. But as you get later in the game and most of your damage is coming from the storm bolts uh, and your maelstrom, wands will be just fine. I really like ice scepter. Most of our spell damage is going to be cold anyway, so we really don't mind. But as you get further and further into the game, something like astrology wand can be nice because that minus three spell cost will help a lot. Uh, so you want something like Ice Scepter, you want to make sure that you're, for your, like, prefixes, you're making, you're picking up something that's, like, cold damage, damage over time, obviously just whatever's going to give you the most, but there is one specific one. Let me see if I can find it real fast. Right here. Small damage and reduced mana cost. This is key. You want to keep an eye out for this and try to put this on the best weapon you can. It is a common, so you should be able to eventually find it, but that, that minus three spell cost, especially if you can put it on a wand... That'll really help with the mana stuff, and you can end up putting out just an insane amount of tornadoes. At the end of the day, there's just not many good options for the offhand, so we just use whatever the backs of the axe we can is because it can give us, you know, some good stats. If you could find a really good two hand, there will be situations where just having a, a good two hand will be better than anything we can find because every offhand catalyst gives intelligence, and we don't care about that. Um, so we're kind of in a rock and a hard place, but. Cleaver Solution, Tempest Maw are two good uniques, and then just any basic axe that has like percent shock chance on hit, and then like cold damage and damage over time on the prefixes. So anything else, not big deal. Just like you want good stats, try to stack as much attunement as possible. You can put it on like damn near every slot that you find. Uh, you want attunement on your rings, cooldown on your boots isn't important. So just movement speed, armor everywhere, blah, 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 the usual. Um, that's pretty much going to be it for this build. If you want to catch it live, I will be playing. I've been playing offline, so I don't have to worry about the online server shenanigans. And I'll catch you guys there. Peace.